As you can see from the title of this video, we're obviously benchmarking Mordhau, but before that, my god, this game is fun. I had no idea that this game was launching, that's kind of why this video is a little bit late, but seriously, I'm having a ton of fun with this game, and I have 8 budget graphics cards to test it with. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be benchmarking the brand new Mordhau with 8 budget graphics cards plus the Ryzen 3 2200G. And if you're new here and you want to see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But this game is so fun that I'm not even running a video ad this time. We don't have time for that. Alright, so for today's testing I have 8 budget graphics cards and these are the same ones that I've used in the series for a while now, so let's make this quick. For the AMD side of things we have the RX 460. The RX 570 and RX 480 and over on the Nvidia side we have the GTX 750 Ti, GTX 960, GTX 970, GTX 1050 Ti and finally the GTX 1060. For our testing platform the CPU that we're going with today is the Ryzen 3 2200G because A this is a realistic CPU that you would actually pair with one of these budget graphics cards and B, it allows me to get an extra benchmark because of the integrated graphics. Also inside our testing rig is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2933 megahertz and the game is installed on a 500 gigabyte A data SSD. Before getting into the benchmarks, for this video I want to quickly talk about what Mordhau actually is because you may be like me and this game completely caught you by surprise. In a nutshell, Mordhau is a first person multiplayer Call of Duty type game but in the medieval time frame. Seriously, Call of Duty in the medieval universe is the best way to describe it. There's three modes of multiplayer, front lines which is basically objective team deathmatch, there's the co-op versus zombies type mode called horde, and finally of course there's a the battle royale mode which I'll be staying away from. The sword and ranged combat is really slick and super satisfying during the very rare times where I actually get a kill and I really recommend this game for 30 bucks. Transitioning back to the benchmarks, here's a chart with all of the cards running the exact same settings, 1080p and medium with no anti-aliasing. As you can see, the 2200G did a pretty good job at not bottlenecking these results as they all scaled up pretty well. For today's testing, to keep it all as consistent as possible, I actually took every single card to a single player team deathmatch mode on the same map with 63 bots. This simulates a ton of players on the field, but it was much more consistent than doing a different online match every time. And finally, the last part of this benchmarking is for each graphics card specifically. The settings that you're about to see for each of these GPUs are the settings that I would personally recommend if these were one of my graphics cards. The first card up was the GTX 750 Ti, and here I had to crank the settings all the way down to low but still in 1080p and I got a pretty smooth 45 FPS average. If you absolutely have to hit that 60 mark then you can indeed drop to 720p but the 1% and 0.1% lows were actually pretty stable so I thought this was smooth enough for me. Next up was the GTX 960 and for this card I used the same exact settings as the chart earlier, 1080p and medium and with this I got an average of 63 frames per second. After that I tested the GTX 970 which is still proving to be one of the best bang for your buck used cards here in 2019 and in 1080p in high settings with FXA turned on, I got just under our target 60 FPS mark. The GTX 1050 Ti followed up next, and here I used the same settings as the 970 except without any anti-aliasing, and with that I averaged again right under our target 60 FPS mark. And to wrap up the Nvidia cards, I tested the 3GB GTX 1060, and in 1080p in high settings I got 59 frames per second, almost identical results to the GTX 970. Getting into our AMD cards for the day, the RX 460 followed, and in 1080p in low settings with no anti-aliasing. Saying I got a pretty smooth and consistent 54 FPS average. The RX 570, which I've been recommending more and more lately, followed up next, and in 1080p in high settings, I got 59 frames per second. And finally, the last card I tested was the RX 480, and here with the exact same settings as the RX 570, I got pretty much the exact same results as well, kind of looking like a bottleneck, but the 2200G wasn't reporting anywhere near 100% usage, and the lows were actually pretty much better with the 480. Speaking of the 2200G, the integrated graphics without a GPU was the last benchmark. That that I ran and for this I had to crank the settings all the way down to 720p and low but I did manage to squeeze out a very playable 51 FPS average. Well there you have it, that wraps up my budget benchmarking video for Mordhau and as always drop a comment down below about what you're thinking about this game so far and how your system is running it. After that feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next we got some more benchmarking to do. You don't want to miss that video.